Hi, I'm Jackie Sones. I'm the research coordinator for UC Davis's Bodega Marine Reserve. I'm really glad you're here because today we get to talk about one of my most favorite groups of animals, the sea stars. First, let's look at the diversity of sea stars found in Northern California. Sea stars are known for having radial symmetry. That is, their arms radiate outward like the spokes of a bicycle wheel. Many sea stars have five arms, like the ochre sea star that's common along our coast. But other species have six arms, like the six-arm sea star. And yet others can have more than 20 arms, like the sunflower star. Other sea stars you might see in our area include the bat star, the leather star, and the dwarf mottled henricea. Although adult sea stars are commonly found in tide pools along rocky shores, other parts of their life cycle are often hidden from view. This is a female ochre sea star releasing tiny orange eggs from pores on the upper surface of her central disc. Once the eggs are fertilized, the embryos develop into microscopic larvae that swim in the ocean for weeks and sometimes months. And sea star larvae don't look anything like the adults. Instead, they look like little spaceships swimming through the water. When sea star larvae are old enough, they undergo metamorphosis and transform into juvenile sea stars. These very young sea stars are tiny, less than one millimeter across. Here are some video clips of juvenile bat stars when they're very young and as they start to grow up and begin to look more like the adults. Look for their spiny skin and for their long tube feet that they use to walk and to hold on to rocks. We still have a lot to learn about sea stars, so keep your eyes open if you visit the seashore and perhaps you'll make a new discovery. Hi, my name is Karina and my last name is Fish, but I am not an ichthyologist, rather I'm a marine biogeochemist. And I'm a fifth year PhD candidate at the University of California, Davis, where my, my dissertation broadly explores how the changes at the surface of the ocean can manifest in the deep sea. Now I'm going to tell you a little story about this coral right here. Um, I use corals to tell us about uh, past environments, kind of like trees and how their tree rings can tell us about the past environment on land. And this particular coral I collected in 2017. I was eight days into a research cruise aboard the EV Nautilus. And I was feeling kind of queasy because I had just scarfed down a greasy croissant. And it was just before 4 a.m. because I was the most junior scientist, so I had the pleasure of the 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. shift. And I walk into this dark ship container on the top deck of the ship. And instantly my feelings of queasiness and like uncomfortableness kind of went away immediately because on the many screens were this beautiful animal. And I was super excited because this was the first time that we had actually seen it so close and so large and like so many of them right there. So these are called bamboo corals because of their segmented skeleton kind of resembles the land plant bamboo. And this chalk-like portion here can tell us about the temperature of the ocean in the deep sea so they can grow as deep as 100 meters, or sorry, as shallow as 100 meters, but as deep as, they can find them as deep as 3,800 meters, which is fun fact, is the average depth of, depth of the ocean. Now this organic node here, this is kind of like the material from your fingernail, and you can peel it back like an onion and go back through time to see what type of plankton were living at the surface of the ocean when it was making its skeleton. So these corals, since they're slow growing on the orders of millimeters per year, um, and because they are on the bottom of the ocean, when they're disturbed from bottom trawling, from whether it's um, for whatever reason, maybe uh, they can be very much disturbed. And you'll see in areas that have a lot of bottom contact fishing and whatnot, that the corals, the animals are very small. Um, so again, these corals are long-lived, they can tell us a lot of information about the environmental conditions that they grew up in, and they are also just really beautiful animals. So yeah, we have corals in the backyard of 
uh, the Bay Area off the coast here, and they are very deep living, or deep living and long lived too. Hi, my name is Eric Sanford. I'm a professor at UC Davis's Bodega Marine Laboratory, and I study the diverse marine life that's found along the California coast. And every so often, I'm fortunate enough to see an octopus. These are amazing and intelligent animals with eight arms, complex eyes, and suckers for capturing crabs and other prey that they hunt for in tide pools. An octopus can be challenging to find in the wild because they are also masters of camouflage. Can you see the octopus in this tide pool hiding among the pink coral and algae and sea squirts? It is actually here in the middle. If you look carefully, you can see its eye and head and arms. Whoa, now that's camouflage. How does an octopus change color so quickly and match its environment so well? Well, the secret is in its amazing skin. If you look at the skin of an octopus under the microscope, you see it includes lots of tiny color spots that are constantly changing in size. These color spots are microscopic organs called chromatophores. A chromatophore like this one has a pigment sac in the middle. Attached to the pigment sac are muscle cells. When these cells pull on the edges of the sac, it grows larger and the pigment becomes more visible. It's kind of like pulling on the edges of a piece of a balloon. As the shape stretches, it becomes bigger and easier to see. Octopus have lots of these chromatophores that come in red, brown, yellow, orange, and other colors. Using these tools, the octopus can change its color in milliseconds to match its environment. This is a handy trick, and it explains why an octopus would be very good at playing hide and seek. Hi everyone, my name is Andrea O'Dell and I am a first year PhD student in ecology. My research harnesses environmental and ecological information with the use of quantitative tools to address management concerns in fisheries. The creatures that I wanted to introduce to you today are commonly known as rockfish. Rockfish are a group of marine fish species within the genus Sebastes. As you might tell by their name, they live in rocky habitats from the near shore all the way down to depths of roughly 9,800 feet, which is an incredibly wide range. There are just over 100 species of rockfish that can be found in many parts of the world, but just off the coast here in California is home to over half of these species, the greatest diversity of rockfish that you'll find anywhere. Rockfish are long-lived species some living for about 20 years, while others having lifespans longer than 80 years. One rough eye rockfish individual that was caught off the coast of Alaska was 205 years old, which is pretty amazing. However, because they are um, long-lived species, they are especially vulnerable to the impacts of fishing and have historically been overfished. But the good news is today, most rockfish species have recovered as a result of swift management actions. Thanks everyone. Hello, my name is Mandy Rousseau and I am the major advisor for the Marine and Coastal Science major on campus. The Marine and Coastal Science major offers an exciting hands-on way to study the oceans and the natural world around us. Marine and coastal science majors start with foundational science classes in biology, chemistry, math, and physics, then more in-depth classes in oceanography, ecology, environmental studies, and hydrology. Students in the College of Biological Sciences will also add on organic chemistry and upper division biology classes. There are four focus areas to choose from in the major, each housed within a different college. Coastal environmental processes, in the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences focuses on the physical and biological processes and environments of the coastal zone. Marine Ecology and Organismal Biology in the College of Biological Sciences covers the biology of marine species from the molecular to population levels 
evolution, and physiological adaptations to the marine environment. Marine environmental chemistry, also in the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, focuses on marine chemistry, geochemistry, the carbon cycle, and contaminant fate and transport. And Oceans and the Earth System, in the College of Letters and Science, includes Earth System Science, Climate Change, Conservation, and Marine Policy. Students focus on one of these four areas, as well as taking classes in every area, providing breadth for your future career in marine sciences. Last but certainly not least, all marine and coastal science majors graduate with fieldwork experience and a research project or internship. Most of our students complete these requirements at the beautiful Bodega Marine Lab, where they get excellent access to classes, labs, and facilities with the California coast as their classroom. Students in marine and coastal science are passionate about the oceans and coastal communities, how humans interact with and affect these areas, and what we can do to preserve our natural resources. They are part of a small but mighty global community of ocean scientists. If you're interested in the marine and coastal science major, visit marinescience.ucdavis.edu today. Go Ags!